Good morning, everybody. My name is Gadra Gonzalez, and I'm PATH with Art Program Director. Welcome. I would like to acknowledge that we're in the ancestral lands of the Duwamish people. We pay respect to the Duwamish elders, past and present, and we pass the respect to their descendants and to all indigenous people. And I'm very honored to uh, welcome you to Our Transform Us, a series of events celebrating Mental Health Awareness Month. During the month of May, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and every Saturday at 11 in the morning, we will be exploring how art can transform and reshape our life and our community. And of course, we would like to say thank you to all our sponsors, including Business Air, for their support. Thank you all. At Path with Art, we provide art engagement opportunities for adults recovering from trauma. We're talking about homelessness, domestic violence, addiction, and other trauma. We believe in the power of art as a bridge to community and path to stability. With COVID-19 pandemic, many nonprofit organizations were forced to close their, door, their, their doors, but we decided to transform our in-person classes to an online curriculum. We also provide students with tablets, digital training, and free internet access for all people that need it. We're in the middle of a fundraising campaign and your supports make all the difference. Please help us. You can donate by clicking the link above in Facebook or visiting our website. You can also visit pathwithart.org to see all the schedule of the amazing events that we have scheduled for this month of May. And please invite your friends, your kids, everybody to join us. Let's work together in this amazing arts projects and share your projects at hashtag ArtTransformUs. And this morning, it's my pleasure to welcome Katie Wheeler and Daisy de la Roca. Katie Wheeler is one of our fabulous teaching artists at Path with Art. She's a comic journalist based in Seattle. She's a monthly contributor to The Lily, a publication of the Washington Post, and The Need, a comic journalism website. And Daisy is one of our incredible Path with Art artists. Katie's going to lead us in the basic of character creation and how to write and create your own mini comics. So let's meet Daisy and Katie. Thanks, Gadra. Hi, everyone. Um, first, I just want to say thank you so much for making me part of your Saturday morning. Um, it's a beautiful day outside here in Seattle. Um, as Gadra mentioned, my name is Katie Wheeler. I'm a comic journalist uh, living in Seattle, Washington. Um, as a comic journalist, I get to cover really amazing topics like homelessness, foster care, immigration, um, and it's really cool because I get to marry journalism with comics. Uh, it's this awesome blend of art that makes information really accessible to everyone, um, and journalism, like deep dives into topics that I care a lot about and I think are really important right now in the world. Um, I also create autobiographical comics about my own life. Um, currently, I'm working on a graphic novel memoir about my experience as a foster parent. Uh, so you can imagine that I was super excited to get the opportunity to work with Path With Art, um, just a really amazing organization that, that values our community here in Seattle and is using art to change lives, which to me is, is so important and cool. Unfortunately, uh, the class that I taught was interrupted by COVID-19, as so many things in our lives were. Um, so I'm just so excited today that I get to have one of my students, Daisy, uh, going through the class today with us and assisting me. Um, so right now, I'm, get, I'm really excited to, to show you this video about Path with Art uh, student, Daisy. So enjoy. My name is and I have been with Path with Art since November. Um, I was in a very dark place before Path with Art. I knew that I had a pretty gnarly addiction um, and had had one pretty much my whole life. I lost everything, ended up losing my housing. Um, I had known that I needed to get sober for quite a while before I actually did. This isn't what I wanted, this isn't how I want to live my life. Like I, I have more purpose than this. So I just decided I need to get my life together. I'm going to rehab, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna dry up. I'm gonna quit with the alcohol and drugs. I got involved with Path With Art 
through the Recovery Cafe, I found a Path with Art brochure that had the classes on there and I couldn't believe it. And I had asked everyone, is this for real? How much does it cost? Is this really gonna happen? The other members of the cafe assured me, yes, it's a real thing. No, it doesn't cost any money. Taking these art classes, it's heaven. I think it's, I love it. For me, it's the best thing that I could have ever asked for. When I got out of rehab, I was isolating because I needed to learn how to use my brain and how to do life. I was getting up and doing things that I wanted to do, and then that's it. Not doing any kind of art, not going to um, meetings like I'm supposed to, um, but Path with Art has definitely gotten me out of isolation big time because it gets me to go to um, my, the classes where I'm with other people and I'm talking and I'm laughing and I'm just, I, I forget about everything. And then by the time I get home and go to bed, it's another day sober and, it's, and I had a great time. And it's teaching me how to live a sober life in a positive way. I feel like I have community around me and support. I feel confident. I, I feel a lot more confident and I feel like I have a purpose and I feel like I have something to do. To me, there's no judgment with Path With Art because it's people from all walks of life. At this point in my life where I'm feeling very vulnerable and not, not so strong, like it's just so important that um, to be around like-minded people. And there's, to me, there's, there's that in these Path With Art classes. I have six months in recovery. Path With Art has been a godsend for me. I love it. That was so great. I'm so excited that I get to work with Daisy today. She's just like a beam of sunshine. So let's welcome her back. Hi, Daisy. Oh my gosh, your dogs are so cute. <laughs> they are the Thank cutest you. dogs. Oh, Thank you. I just want to hug them. Uh, so what have you been doing since, since Comet class, since our Comet class was so rudely interrupted? I know. Um... Uh, I have been uh, doing a lot of writing and a lot of um, art, painting, and comics using the great. tools that you taught in class. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great to hear. How have you been? Uh, you know, I mean, surviving. I think that, you know, I'm really lucky to, to live in this city. Um, and you know, to have this beautiful weather, we got to be grateful for the stuff that we have, but definitely for a few weeks there, I was feeling like, you know, I want to be productive. I want to make comics, you know, like I'm, I'm here in my house. I have nothing but time, but, um, I think I had to give myself a little time to just like experience this and, and tell myself it was okay to not, not create art until I felt creative and compelled to do it. But can be hard sometimes yeah. when you're a working artist and it's your job. So, so yeah, that's been, it's been a learning experience, I think for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you will be very familiar with the stuff that we are going to cover today. Um, so we're going to do a lesson in character design, kind of get our creative juices flowing. I'm sorry. I really hate that phrase. I don't know why I used it. Um, but I'm really excited um, because, you know, I think a lot of people have this idea um, of like, oh, I can't draw. I'm really bad at drawing. You know, like I can't, I can't draw this realistic rendering of a human. So like, therefore I can't do comics. And I'm just here to tell everyone you don't have to. And that's the great thing about comics is that it allows people uh, to tell their stories in such creative ways. And Daisy, that was why I loved our class because I, I know you remember just like the super wide range of art styles. And yes. yeah, and every one of them was great. Um, we had this really great exercise that we did at the beginning of every class where we would take attendance um, by listening to a song 
And while the song was playing, we would draw a self-portrait of ourselves using the theme of the day. Um, and it was just so fun to see everyone's self-portraits and, and what they came up with that day, how they were feeling, you know, how the theme affected them. So I love that. I love doing I remember, that. didn't you do like a really cool mermaid for the underwater? What did you do? I did a water. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I was thinking of someone else, but the walrus was very cool too. There was also a starfish, I think. It was we had a great time. It was a really fun class. Mm -hmm. um, so, right, we're going to do that today. We're going to do a little character creation, and then the second part of our class is going to be creating a mini comic. Um, really fun to do. Super addictive. I'm excited to teach you guys. You guys will have just like a stack of a million mini comics in your home after you're done with this. So let's get going. Bear with me um, as I change my screen. And if you, if anyone has any questions during this, if you're like, wow, I don't know what's happening, please slow down. Uh, just stick them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as we go along. So what you'll need, a uh, pencil, paper, or a pen. Uh, we don't have to get precious with this. So. Bear with me as I tip this down. I have creative solutions for working in quarantine. So I am going to be drawing upside down. I know you're all like super impressed, but just FYI, I can, I can draw better right side up. <laughs> so character creation. Um, as Daisy will tell you, I really only had a couple of rules in class, um, but one of them especially for character creation, is that stick figures, not allowed. And the reason is this, and I think um, Linda Berry, who is a really amazing cartoonist who is also from uh, Washington, says that a stick figure really can't inhabit energy. Like, as she says, they can't really do anything except get stopped and frisked by the police. Like, this is... This is all they can do. They're not running or jumping. It's it's pretty boring. Um, and drawing a more interesting character is just as easy as this. Um, but I think people get really stuck on stick figures because they're like the easy way to do it. So I'm gonna show you another easy way, but that's far more interesting than stick figures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with just drawing some rando shapes. And this is something that you can do with members of your family or friends. You can draw shapes on a piece of paper and then even trade them for an extra challenge. Because what we're going to do now is use these shapes to create a figure. So I'm gonna choose this rando one and just, I'm actually gonna do it in pencil over here. -na 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 -na. That's, that's something close to that, right? Um, so I'm gonna add a head. And then I know one of the things that, I mean, even professional cartoonists get really stuck on is drawing things like feet and hands. And the great thing about comics is that I do not have to draw like hyper-realistic, like beautifully rendered hand. What I can do is can literally draw a circle and put some fingers in it or just keep it as a circle. We know instinctually as humans that that's a hand. Like the great thing about comics, and I, I think I've named 50 great things about comics so far, but the cool thing is that that humans want to recognize ourselves in shapes. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the like, the electrical socket that everyone says looks like a face. That's just something that people like to do. And it, and it makes cartooning really easy because even though this like, it looks like no human that I've ever met, <laughs> you recognize it as a person. Um, and it just has so much more life and energy than this stick figure over here who is, who's just a bummer. I'm sorry, he's bumming me out. So we've drawn our figure in pencil here. You can get as messy as you want, you know, because what we're going to do with these pencil lines is erase them. So if 
you're like, oh, I'm going to draw this nose. And you're like, oh, I don't like that. Just draw over it. You don't even have to be, you know, special and erase it. So let's see. I'm going to have this person wearing a sweet tank top because it's very hot outside right now. Some little shorts. This is a time to really just like have fun. And if there's someone, you know, if you're doing this with someone in your house, you can trade suggestions. You can say like, oh, I challenge you to draw a body with these two shapes. All right, so we've drawn our character in pencil here. Hope everyone can see that. Um, and a neat trick you can do here is I've drawn it in pencil. Now I'm gonna take my eraser, if you have one handy, and I'm just going to erase it. And you're going to be able to see kind of the, the ghost, like the shape underneath, even though I'm erasing all these lines. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see the... Um, boop, boop, boop. Yep. You can see kind of the, the pencil marks under there. And so now I'm going to go over with my pen. And this is actually how I make my comics. First, I go in with a pencil. The stage is called penciling. Uh, I erase them. And then this stage is called inking. So now I have this great shape that I've put in for myself. I can draw this kind of swole person. Maybe they're working out. They kind of look like they're wearing exercise shorts. So I'll give them a little exercise shorts and some great little legs. Maybe he has a dumbbell for working out. And the head. Maybe he has like little sweat droplets. This is just, it's an opportunity for you to kind of let your hand go and create the shapes that it, that it wants to make. You know, I did not start out this drawing thinking, oh, I'm going to draw this person who's working out. I just picked out some shapes and then let my brain kind of take me wherever it wanted to go. And that's why this exercise is really fun because there's no pressure to create anything groundbreaking. You're just letting your mind kind of wander. Um, and it's a fun creative exercise, you know, for, for anyone, for any uh, you know, art style or however comfortable you feel drawing, anyone can do this. So I would challenge you um, to continue to pick out some of these shapes and do a whole, you know, like a couple of character sheets of these people. Um, and we also has, have a hashtag, you can share these, uh, hashtag art transforms us. And I would love to see everyone's creations. i check out some of these questions here. Does it work if you ink over pencil then erase? That's a great question. Um, it depends on your pen. Uh, and so what I would do is, is take a couple of pens, put them like mark down on paper and then go over it with eraser and see if it smudges. Because some pens, um, let's see if I have one here. This Statler, these are great for inking because you can go over them with an eraser and they won't smudge. But things like this, uh, this Uniball pen that I'm using, the ink is going to start spreading everywhere. And so really like best practice is to pencil, then erase, and then ink. Um, but really experiment with the tools that you have. And that's a, that's a great way to, to see what works and what doesn't work. So I'm going to bring Daisy back in because I want to see what she's made with her character. She should be old hat at this by now. No <laughs> pressure. <laughs> okay. Um, so I just learned how to create a character with shapes, just like Katie taught me the other day. And oh, nice. Oh, I love the detail. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I got fancy and threw some color Ooh, in there. And that's a Walkman. Remember the Walkmans from like? I do. I, do. I had a I had a Discman. You know. I don't know if I had a Walkman, but no, I didn't have a disc. Forget it. it skips. <laughs> like 
<laughs> up with the tape one. I love it. Uh, that's great. I really love all the details that you added. Um, and that's a really cool way to start building your character. You know, it's like you got the basketball hoop, the Walkman. Um, it's really fun to kind of like I was doing with the with the weightlifter. It's like, oh, what did what's his yeah. story? What's his deal? Um, yeah. So uh, I, I'm not going to take any more questions about this exercise because we're going to move on to the next one, uh, which I'm very excited about. What you're going to need for this exercise is letter size piece of paper, eight and a half by eleven, and some scissors. And then you know keep those writing implements around because we're going to we're going to use those. Um, and so this. Uh, exercise is about making a mini comic. Um, so what we're going to do is take our piece of paper, we're going to fold it down um, hot dog way is how I learned it in public school. That's why teachers are so important because now I can never remember it any different way. I can only remember the hot dog and hamburger way and it makes me sound super professional. So hot dog and we're gonna open it and hamburger. I wonder how kids are learning it these days. I wonder if teachers are still using the hot dog and hamburger. Thanks, Mrs. Auger, fifth grade, shout out. Um, so now we've got four quadrants. So one more fold and we're gonna fold this one in half. So you can use the edge of your table to crease it or your fingernails. Okay, so it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I think if, if you leave today with, with one lesson, it's that none of this has to be perfect. Uh, and that's another great thing about comics. So when we unfold this, we should have eight quadrants. So this is the kind of tricky part. It's not even really that tricky, but watch closely. We're going to fold it. And then on the folded side, so this side is, is open. On the folded side, we're going to cut. Sorry, I'm gonna flip this here. So this is the folded side. We're going to cut from here to the very middle. So you can watch me and then do it, or if you're feeling uber confident, you can do it. So I just cut from the side to the middle. So now when we open it, it should look like a mouth. Oh, got a slit right down the middle. So we're gonna fold it back lengthwise, hot dog. And then we're going to push the two pieces, the two sides together. So it kind of does this. And then with one of our hands, we're gonna just grab increase that. And so now you should have this little book. You made a book on a Saturday morning. Like what's everyone else doing? You know, it's great. So now you have an eight page mini comic basically, and you can fill this with whatever you want. Um, and, uh, you know, a great inspiration for this, uh, is another cartoonist, Sarah Merck in Portland. She did a project where it was a year of zines. And so she did a mini zine every day. It's very cool. Um, highly suggest you check it out. But yeah, she made a lot of these. So now I'm going to bring Daisy back in. I'm going to do a little brainstorming about uh, what we're going to do our mini comic about today. I was kind of thinking, Daisy, uh, to try to be more positive that we should try to come up with like maybe things that we like about quarantine, things that aren't the worst, kind of that silver lining. Do you have any ideas? Yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah. See, you're so positive. That's why I'm so happy you're helping me today. Uh, positive things to do whilst in quarantine. Nice. And um, my favorite thing I have, you said, um, uh, one image per page. Yeah. yeah. And so I went and did 
one thing per page instead of just one because I've been doing um I got research and read you can't see it because it's I haven't gone over it yet research and read page one paint page two teach my dogs new tricks nice. like hula hoop and jumping through I'm, it and I'm very um, excited to see a picture of that that's a great, great I know image. okay <laughs> um um they mainly run from it right now and then I have to um bathe them after because then they'll go and they will uh run off and um roll around in duck do which is cool. lovely be giving um, dogs that. well that's not it. super positive but I, well yeah I know it's well it gets me outside maybe it's part of their but, positive uh, things in quarantine is getting to roll around they like it yeah they love it um, and then I put sing and study nature. And so I you I did um let's see. I made a bird right there and then a bird down there, and then I'm studying what the birds are doing, um, how they're communicating, and I'm studying um their sounds and copying their sounds. So cool. And um, <laughs> um and then um I'm kind of like learning the hierarchy. Of the well, I don't know if that's the word, but like there's there's a new there's a new bird in town and it's like the black bird that has tangerine wings and it's ran out every other bird. And I sat there, yeah, and then um learn how to use my crime. I don't book. like wanna um, assign you any homework, Daisy, but I do need you to make a comic about the birds around your house. Okay. I think that would be an amazing eight page comic. Maybe the okay. title should be "There's a New Bird in Town." I don't know. Just throwing out ideas. It's fun to collect. Okay. Um, but that is—it's a great way, you know, to kind of write a story. So, as Daisy mentioned, we have eight pages. Um, I just wrote on my little notepad here one through eight. One page one is your title page. So that is the front. The front of your book is page one, um, and so I recommend doing the title on the first page, but you can start your comic there if you want to. It's kind of like whatever whatever you wanna do, it's up to you. But basically you have uh, six pages to play with because your first page is your title and then page eight is your back page, which I like to do, you do a little author bio, you can just do the end in big letters. Again, you can kind of roll with this, whatever you're feeling, however long you think your story needs. Um, so I also did fine things I don't hate about quarantine. <laughs> a little That's less positive fine. than Daisy, <laughs> but also um, time spent with my dogs. Yeah. yeah. But Aww. as Daisy mentioned, I have an image, one image per page, because these um, these mini comics are pretty small. So if you wanted to put a couple of different things, if you write super tiny. That's great, um, but I think they work really well with just one one image per page. So here I put uh, my new skincare routine. It's pretty epic. Time to think. Uh, I just stare at things and think now because I have the time to do that. It's it's a great luxury that I didn't have before. Um, so I've added a little color and um, you can do that too. It's just a really fun way to tell a short story. And this is another way that you can kind of collaborate with friends over Zoom or you can do it together. Um, you can write the story for your friend and then they can draw it. And that's you know how it works professionally as well. Um, you know, that you might have a writer and then you might have a cartoonist as well. Um, so your prompt today, everyone, is going to be, you know, finding the positive parts of quarantine, finding that, that silver lining. And sometimes it can be really hard. Um, and I know personally, I kind of, I kind of resist trying to find the positive in something that I'm so upset about. It makes me feel like, you know, sometimes a little worse. Um, but I found that lately doing these little comics and realizing that it has kind of opened up this new part of my creative life. I don't know if you feel the same way, Daisy, but it's just, it's kind of given me time to to think about stuff. Yeah. 
And I was like you too. In the very beginning, I was like, just blank. Like I had, I'm like, oh my gosh, I should be doing all kinds of art. And then it took me like a month of this quarantine. And then just lately, yeah. I've been like, boom, 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 boom. And um, creating the comics totally Great. helped. Yeah. I started yeah. with that and I was like, oh, here's an idea. And here's an idea. And this one and that one and the other. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's going crazy now. Yeah. Ideas. And I think that's that timeline is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, different for everyone too, you know? So give yourself, give yourself space to be creative. And if you start writing the comic and you're like, oh, I'm not feeling this step away from it. Like whether we like it or not, we kind of have all the time in the world right now. So um, we're going to give you this creative challenge this week make something, sing something, write something, just, just try to get yourself in that creative space. Um, and then share it using art transforms us. So what we don't hate about quarantine, that's your prompt. Um, I hope you take what you learned today to create your own characters and tell your own stories. I'm really excited to see them. Um, I will definitely go through the hashtag um, and comment on them and look through them. So Daisy, Thank you so much for helping me today. It was so great to see you again. Likewise, thank you so much for yeah. having me. Do you want the back of my, um, I'm just learning how to use my Chromebook, like I said, I know, so here we go. Uh, it says, okay, so my back page says, I kind of <laughs> like this after I got done making my, um, the thing. I'm like, I like yeah. this. I could see myself getting addicted to it, just like I did with the Chinese fortune. Yeah. You, um, you ever make you those? I like have them. a stack of these. They're really fun to do. Yeah. Um, and if anyone, uh, if you get stuck and you're like, oh, I don't remember what she said. That went by really fast. If you just Google um, eight page mini comic fold, they're all over the internet. It's really easy to find. It's it's a tutorial that that I think I probably did when I was learning to do comics. So anyway, uh, it will also be on Facebook, so you can you can find it there too. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm gonna end it here, but you know, thanks for spending your Saturday with me, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thanks. And wait to see everybody's creation. Please send all your creation to hashtag ArtTransformUs. I can't wait to see all your creation. And we hope that today's experience give you a peek of the work that we do at Path with Art with our students. We have a right, amazing program for our students. We, we have visual arts, we uh, teach um, drama, painting, music, so many different um, classes for our students. And we have an incredible group of teachers like Kerry, like Katie, I'm sorry, who works together with our inspirational student artists like Daisy. They bring their life experience to art, and that is where the whole magic happens. It's nothing better than give back to others. You feel so great when you share what you have and you help the community. Your donations will help our students to continue to access this program during the pandemic and beyond. Help our students to move from isolation to creation. You can do that. You can transform their lives. Please donate by clicking the link above in Facebook. And we're so glad that you join us today. And please join us again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Leslie Chaihuli for a discussion on creativity as path to resilience. And join us next Saturday at the same time, 11 in the morning, for flower arranging in London's Plains, Catherine Anderson. And we would like to thank all our generous sponsors, including our presenting sponsor, Business Air, our patron sponsor, GLY Construction and Plymouth Housing, and our friendship level sponsors, Marcy Goodroff, Kiwi Wonder Orthodontics, and Sevenbergen Capital Investment. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see you again next Tuesday and during the whole month. Please help others donate, transform the life of people. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.